Welcome to In Between the Whistles. I'm Joe. I'm Cindy, and we are your hometown team. Now, we are talking to Tigers, and they are on an absolute tear. Yeah. Um, you know, they just moved into second place today. In That's the, unbelievable. In the Central. They Isn't moved. that unbelievable? Who would have thought, Joe, that we would have been talking about the potential for a true Cinderella story here at the beginning of the season? We well, would have never guessed this. I, I don't think they're a Cinderella yet, but they're seven and three in their last ten, and they've won three straight. They've won three straight. They're playing really, really good baseball. They're five hundred on the road now. No, they're ten games below five hundred on the road, and they're above five hundred at home. And they get a home stand this weekend against Cleveland, and then they play the. the uh, they got a good home. I think it's sixteen home stand. I don't know. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, something like that. And and speaking of five hundred, five hundred seems to be the Tigers' number because we've got our. Uh, boy here, Miguel Cabrera, who is just one home run away from that magic number. It would be awesome if he could hit it at Comerica Park. Oh, that would be fantastic. Uh, obviously, you know, yeah. next Friday is, is going to be a big day for Detroit because you got not only do you got the Pit, the Pistons playing their summer league game, but you have the Tigers where Miguel Cabrera could hit his 500th home run and they could gain they can gain some ground in the wild card. But you have the Lions preseason game, so it's a full day. Yeah, that is going to be a super sports day here in Detroit. And, uh, you know, one of the interesting things is, and I just want to mention this, you know, people, one of the things people ask us is if we're scripted here on the show. Do we read a teleprompter or do we have notes? No. And uh, we don't. We don't. This is, you're getting us raw and ready and uh, all ready to talk sports with you. So Joe Tex checks his phone from time to time. But, uh, you know, that's because he's a stats and average guy. Because, as you know, he's an NHL and an NFL scout. So he can't help it. He's attached to the phone. But, I'm, attached, uh, I'm always attached to the phone. But here's the thing. Yeah. We talked about before the show how the Tigers are getting better. Yeah. So you have a free agent that you would want to sign, and I have a free agent that I want to sign. Because I think we can – improve upon what we're seeing. What we're seeing right now is fantastic, but I think if we bring Carlos Correa here to Detroit, uh, we still have that hole in the uh, you know middle infield. And not that we don't have some guys who are stepping up to the plate and really kind of getting it done. Uh, I think we need something a little more solid there. And you know, Correa's only uh, batting 271 right now, but that's still respectable. We still got some sluggers in the lineup so that you know that's not all that he has to carry. I think he'll do his share of the work there, but it's his defensive play. If you look at his def defensive play, you know, here is a former first round draft pick, former rookie of the year. There, there's a reason for that. And his play has stayed solid and he's actually improved. And a little bit of slump right now, but again, his defensive play is something that the Detroit Tigers need there in the middle infield. And I think that that's uh, one of the ones that we should really go after. He's also not that expensive, $11.7 million uh, for he's gonna MLB. Way, he's going to get way more than that. Yeah, you know, he, he may, he may, but I think he would be worth it. And uh, I think that, you know, we could very well. Well, if um, if Al Avila will just listen and learn from the man Stevie Eiserman, he will learn how to get these uh, really great uh, prospects or great opportunities at a bargain basement deal. You know, I, I look at the same thing with you. I, I do think Carlos Correa would be a great uh, addition to the team. Yeah. But I'm going to give you three names that I think that would be great additions to the Tigers. All right. I think if you brought back Nick Castellanos, that would be a huge, huge huge thing. I love that idea. I love that idea. Absolutely. I'm with you. There's also another person I want to bring back from, into the Tigers fold, and I think that he would be, it'd be tough to fit him into the lineup. I think you could fit him in maybe as a DH, or maybe you could put him at first base. I don't know. I think that's something I'll be a little bit, if you can get J.D. Martinez, that'd be that'd be really good. I like the Carlos Correa one, yeah. but if you can't get Carlos Correa and you want like a bargain kind of guy? Mm -hmm. Marcus Simeon is a guy that I would love to get. You know, Marcus Simeon is, he's 31. He, uh, I think it's Marcus Simeon. You know, and I, I like those two that you mentioned already, and I will tell you that I heard. No, I, I was looking at Strowman, but oh yeah, Simeon okay. right here. Yeah. I, heard, I heard rumor though, Joe, tell me what you think of this. I heard rumor that we may be seeing Justin Verlander back on the mound for the Tigers. What do you think about that? You've got those insider uh, information more so than I, but uh, what do you think? And do you think that that would be a good idea if we could? At this point right now, I think it's a foregone conclusion that Verlander will be back in the old English D. I think what you're going to see is the reason that it would be a great idea is because there's a guy in Casey Myers who reminds me a lot 
the Verlander in a ways. You know, he's 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 a very good player, mm-hmm. but he needs to get kind of more mature. Yeah. Basically, what, do you remember when the Tigers in 06, who they brought in, the tra- the, the that kind of guided Verlander? Mm-hmm. It was Kenny Rogers. Yeah. When Kenny Rogers came in, Verlander started to play, get to his peak. I think that's what you would see with Casey Myers if you brought Verlander back in the fold. I think Verlander would teach the young kids that how to how to, you know, the ebbs and flows of the game. You know, it's it's even you're a rookie or you're a second year player, you're an inexperienced player. You know, they were talking about it in the broadcast today with the Tigers and Matt, yep. Matt, Matt Manning, and he, they would say like every time he got a hit against him, he would he would take the heart. You know, there's always the reason that you a veteran pitcher would be great on staff is because. Like Kenny Rogers did for Verlander, he would say, "This is what happens. Like you just got you got to forget about it and move on." It's the same thing. Like when um, when Hasek was in Detroit with the Red Wings, and he he was he was mentoring other goaltenders, you know, along the way. He was he said the same thing. Like you can't you can't stress about one goal or you know in the pitcher's case one hit. You know, you gotta move on. Like yeah. it's, it's like a quarterback throwing an interception. You gotta move on, or else it's gonna get in your head, and you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna make more mistakes. Yeah. Well, then you end with end up with quicksand, where you just got one thing to the other to the other, and then you can't get back out of it. And I think that's what you see with Casey Mize and Terry Scoville. Is, you know, sometimes they'll get dinged up because they'll, they'll they'll get hit around the park because you you can see that they're thinking too much about the next pitch, mm-hmm. and they really don't have it. You know, a couple weeks a week ago, I think it was last. Uh, last Wednesday or yeah last Wednesday you know Casey Myers went out there and he got hit around the park but the Tigers won same thing here you know you just you, you gotta you gotta get those guys the older guys into the fold kind of give them a veteran leadership the leadership is what happens and Hinch has created a good culture for that leadership to come in and make this, you know he knows Hinch so he can go in there and yeah. make you know decisions and Carlos Correa coming in he also knows Hinch, so that would be another good thing. Well, you know, and that's the thing. You can't underestimate the value of a veteran presence. And I think that's one of the things that the Tigers could really uh, benefit from. And all of these folks that we've talked about, all these guys we talk about potentially coming to Detroit could provide by that veteran presence. You know, one of the things is I can relate to that myself because, you know, even in politics, right? I mean, right now I'm I'm the veteran, um, you know, where I represent, you know, there's three of us who govern on a daily basis in our township. And I'll tell you, you know, I'm, I'm the veteran presence and I've got sometimes on these these kind of newbies, these uh, rookies that I've got this year, um, you know, the littlest thing, oh, geez, you know, that's, you know, you take those hits. I got a, I got a big hit today, you know, how do I manage that? You know, they get a little freaked out. And you just got to say, hey, look, I've been there and done that, and it's okay. And that's what these guys are going to say to these other young ones coming up is that it's okay. This stuff happens. We got this covered. You're going to have great games. You're going to have great days. You're going to have, you know, you, you one day you might pitch a no-hitter, uh, you know, but then another day, you know, you might get, you know, 10 not, runs not scored on you, right? You know? No, it, so I think you could see, I mean, in the Major League Baseball, I think they can see that the Tigers are starting to get really, really better. Yeah. And they don't really have the talent, so if you bring in a guy like Carlos Correa or like Marcus Simeon in the upper in the min, infield, I mean that that makes it, it that creates one spot that's better than it was. And obviously, I don't think Candelario is this guy that's going to take you far at third base, but I think that you could see someone that comes in the third base that could be you know Spencer Torkelson. He's 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 gearing up for third base. I think it's going to be interesting the way they do it. Yeah, I wouldn't mind, too, the Tigers bringing on maybe a little more depth in the outfield. Our outfield has been performing well, but, you know, if you have, like, we had that collision the other day with Akil Badu and uh, who else was out there in the outfield, right? And uh, both those guys kind of got the wind knocked out of them. But, you know, in the event that you've got guys like that who are going to have to fall out of the lineup, I I think think a little depth in the outfield wouldn't hurt. I think the Tigers are well-versed to have depth in the outfield. I mean, you you look at their – the prospects they have in the outfield, I think that's going to get a lot better. You know, you got Parker Meadows and they're out there, and mm-hmm. you have uh, Riley Green who's going to be coming up sometime yeah. soon. Yeah, yeah, I think he's a good um, one. You know, Parker, you know, Meadows. You have you have uh, Rob Robson. Robson is coming this mm-hmm. this weekend. He's going to be making his first major league baseball start. He's also from Windsor, so good luck, hometown kid. Yeah, and um, I think what you have is. 
they're the outfield is it has a lot of talent. So I think you can rely on the young kids out there. Infield is where I worry about because that's where the most mistakes can, that can't happen. They literally can't happen because those decide the games more often than not. So you get a you get a veteran like Carlos Correa or Marcus Simeon in that short stop position. You have Jonathan yeah. Scope at second yeah. base or first base, and you have this good kind of attraction in the uh, in the in the infield for once. Either way, Tigers are much better positioned than I think we thought they were going to be. Although I think I do believe I said at the beginning of the season I had hopes for a playoff run, and you thought I was nuts. And uh, I'm looking for the Cinderella story. Let's see if we get it. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs, but I think that they're on the right track. It's very interesting, Cindy, because I think that the Tigers, AJ Hinch deserves AL Manager of the Year by far. Absolutely. Away. If he doesn't get it, it's a crime against yep. humanity. <laughs> this guy is legit the real deal, and yeah. Tiger fans got lucky because he is the real deal. 100%. In the next segment, we will be talking about Michigan football and Jim Harbaugh and how this is a big year for Jim Harbaugh, but there is something that one uh, team said about his former Michigan player that should be really, really eye-opening for Michigan fans. That's next. Join us.